Chapter 12 Since his wife was a Tokyo woman, both she and he had told me so. Actually, she added half-jokingly, I'm not a pure blood. Her mother had been born in Tokyo's Ikigaya district, back when the city was still called Edo, but her father had come from the provinces, Totori or somewhere of the sort. Sensei, for his part, came from a very different part of Japan, Niigata Prefecture. Clearly, if she had known him in his student days it was not because they shared a hometown. But since she blushed at my question and seemed disinclined to say more, I did not press the subject further. Between our first meeting and his death, I came to know Sensei's ideas and feelings on all sorts of subjects, but I learned almost nothing about the circumstances surrounding his marriage. Sometimes I interpreted this reticence charitably, choosing to believe that Sensei, as an older man, would prefer to be discreet on a private matter of the heart. At other times, however, I saw the question in a less positive light, and felt that Sensei and his wife shared the older generation's timorous aversion to open, honest discussion of these delicate subjects. Both of my interpretations were of course mere speculations, and both were premised on the assumption that a splendid romance lay behind their marriage. This assumption was not far wrong, but I was able to imagine only part of the story of their love. I could not know that behind the beautiful romance lay a terrible tragedy. Moreover, since his wife had absolutely no way of understanding how devastating this tragedy had been for him. To this day she knows nothing of it. Sensei died without revealing anything to her. He chose to destroy his life before her happiness could be destroyed. I will say nothing of that tragedy yet. As for their romance, which was in a sense born of this dreadful thing. Neither of them told me anything. In her case, it was simply discretion. Sensei had deeper reasons for his silence. One memory stands out for me. One spring day when the cherries were in full bloom, Sensei and I went to see the blossoms in Weno. Amid the crowd were a lovely young couple, snuggled close together as they walked under the flowering trees. In this public place, such a sight tended to attract more attention than the blossoms. I'd say they're a newly married couple, said Sensei. They look as if they get on just fine together, I remarked a little snidely. Sensei's face remained stony, and he set off walking away from the couple. When they were hidden from our view, he spoke. Have you ever been in love? I had not, I replied. Wouldn't you like to be? I did not answer. I don't imagine that you wouldn't. No. You were mocking that couple just now. I think that mockery contained unhappiness at wanting love but not finding it. Is that how it sounded to you? It is. A man who knows the satisfactions of love would speak of them more warmly. But, you know. Love is also a sin. Do you understand? Astonished, I made no reply.